You know, automatons are simple robots. This is a robot? This is a robot. Whoa, it's beautiful. This one is complex. They started out less complex, got even more complex. What does this do, though? This one's really fun. <laughs> that sounds so real. <laughs> That's so cool. The term robot comes from a root meaning forced labor, and the term automaton comes from like mimicking life, specifically looking like a human. So this would be more of a robot. However, it's pretty cool, right? I mean, it chirps, it moves, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's replicating life. At the Franklin Institute, the Meyer Day Automaton is our earliest robot it's from 1799. We continue to do research on it because we keep finding out more wonderful information about this artifact, which makes it really exciting for me as a curator. Um, the Meyer Day Automaton was made by Henri Meyer Day, and it has the largest known working programming of any automaton. Wow. So what does it do? What's the programming? Well, this mechanical boy can draw four pictures and write three poems. Two of the poems he writes are in French. This robot speaks more languages than I do. <laughs> Is it true that Brian Selznick went to the Franklin Institute and was inspired to then make the movie Hugo. Absolutely. The interesting thing about robots I've always found is this idea of uncanny valley, right? If you saw the movie The Polar Express, that those people in that movie looked a little bit creepy. And robots have that same problem. Does this robot creep you out? <laughs> <laughs> well, for that reason, we have him actually unclothed so you can see his mechanism, and you really know that it is a robot when you're looking at him. Um, but yeah, I mean, he moves so smoothly that when he looks up at you, you do feel like he's looking at you. Whoa, so creepy. <laughs> I love it. Through history, automatons were created basically to wow people and entertain them. Egyptians had speaking statues, images of their deities made of painted or gilded wood with jointed limbs and voices operated by temple priests standing behind them. In 1206, the grandfather of robotics, Ismail al-Jazari, wrote the Book of Knowledge of Ingenious Mechanical Devices. He's known for musical robots and the elephant clock. In 1495, Leonardo da Vinci created, well, at least the drawings for, the automated knight, and it was built hundreds of years later. He may have built one, but we still don't know. In the 1700s, Jacques de Valcanson designed and began to create a bleeding man. The bleeding man was basically made for a king so that it would replicate life so you could do medical experimentation on the robot instead of on the human. Uh, yeah, for sure it's better to experiment on robots than on humans. In 1804, mass production was automated with the Jacquard loom, which cut weaving costs down and increased production. In 1921, the term robot was first used in a Czech play about <laughs> robots replacing people in the textile workforce. Automation, robots taking our jobs. A hundred years ago, this could have come out today. Whoa. In the 1960s, Kunihiko Fukushima invented the first deep convolutional neural network called the Neocognitron, which is pretty wild sounding. Then we have Deep Blue, a computer that defeated chess champion Garry Kasparov in 1997. And in 2016, the humanoid robot Sophia was built. Now there are so many humanoid robots all over the place. Are you one? <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> So robots today run the gamut from mechanical robots all the way to digital robots, which is what we think of when we think of AI or artificial intelligence, right? Like Siri, Alexa, Google, they're all trying to build AI and artificial intelligence. In the future, both digital and mechanical robots will inevitably get smarter in their respective fields of application and replace humans for performance of many tasks. I am on the side of the robots for things that are like self-driving cars or even flying our planes, since autopilot does a lot of the work already. And that doesn't worry you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it should. Maybe I don't it know. It, somehow it doesn't. Somehow I'm a little more concerned that there might be a human up there messing up as opposed to a robot. But maybe I should be worried. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> 
I love seeing that mechanical robot. I think there's something magical and wonderful about seeing that mechanism behind it and then the very, very smooth robotic movements or smooth human movements almost. Yeah, it, the mechanical robots do feel magical. Although if you ask a voice assistant to turn on the lights, that can feel pretty magical too. And that's going through lots of different robots and you know sending signals across the world. So I don't know, they're both pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. <laughs> we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Even though in this one we might disagree, there are many more episodes of Ingenious. Check them out at beyond.fi.edu. <laughs>